The Russian aviation industry will not receive additional funding until the results of an audit conducted by specialists from Sperbank are ready. The publication, Business Online, cited a source with knowledge of the situation for its report. Last year, Spurbank conducted an industry analysis specifically focusing on civilian programs such as the SJ-100, MC-21, IL-114, and 2214. The auditors examined efficiency, production processes, leadership practices, and the use of budget funds at aviation facilities in Irkutsk, Komsomol, Skonomor, Kazan, and Lukovitsi. The Spurbank audit identified a distinct managerial failure within the sector. Nevertheless, Industry stakeholders initially disregarded these findings, citing the financier's lack of aviation expertise and deeming their involvement inappropriate. While the issue received some attention at the time, it remained unaddressed and has now resurfaced with heightened urgency. This time, the audit report will be submitted directly to the Russian Prime Minister, Mikhail Mishustin, rather than to Rostec or the Ministry of Industry and Trade. Spurbank, together with the United Aircraft Corporation, has been tasked with developing a new management and financing model for the sector. The government's zero-tolerance policy toward ineffective spending is evident in the fact that no additional state funding will be allocated until this new system is established. Spurbank's recent involvement is indicative of the growing dissatisfaction with the current state of the aviation industry. During a strategic session on aviation development, Prime Minister Mishustin sharply criticized the sector, emphasizing that companies under UAC operate in a fragmented and inefficient manner, with poor resource allocation and frequent failure to meet targets on time or with sufficient quality. Despite substantial government investments, the use of funds has been sluggish and largely ineffective, further worsened by inflation and secretive managerial programs. The main obstacle remains the absence of a unified management system with clearly defined responsibilities, which hampers the adoption of digital technologies, innovation, and production. Spurbank acts as an outside auditor, using project-based methods to fairly evaluate how well management and business processes function in the aviation sector. Although the audit conducted last year identified major issues in key programs like the SJ-100 and MC-21, the sector's leadership failed to address the findings adequately, viewing the financiers as outsiders unfamiliar with aviation specifics. The Russian government has now reactivated the initiative to incorporate Spurbank's expertise into a systemic audit and reform effort, following additional delays and failures. It is important to note that Spurbank does not have any current plans to directly manage civilian aviation projects or assume control from UAC or other state stakeholders. Instead, the bank and UAC are expected to collaborate on creating a management model and developing recommendations designed to prevent a repeat of past errors. Prime Minister Mishustin has emphasized that the success of this model is a strict prerequisite for the continuation of funding. He is determined to ensure that any additional public funds are spent responsibly and deliver measurable results. Some industry experts, including aviation specialist Roman Gusarov, remain critical of Spurbank's involvement, despite the government's firm stance. Gusarov argues that financiers, lacking the necessary expertise, may actually impede aviation development. While bankers typically focus on quicker returns, aviation projects are capital-intensive, long-term undertakings that only yield results after many years. There is concern that the audit recommendations could lead to excessive program cuts or other measures that would hurt the sector's growth. The aviation industry's issues are, however, undeniable. The scientific and training base is deteriorating, planning and control are ineffective, responsibility is scattered, and cooperation between companies is weak. These problems are evident at facilities such as the Kazan Aviation Plant, where production targets for models like the Tu-214 have been missed despite state funding exceeding 40 billion rubles.
The need for system-wide reform is highlighted by repeated failures to meet promised production volumes and delays in new aircraft deliveries, which reveal deep managerial and production discipline flaws. The engagement of Spurbank as an independent external specialist acknowledges the aviation sector's inability to independently ensure transparency, efficient budget use, and systematic management. Asperbank is expected to contribute to the development of a functional system of coordination, control, investment attraction, and technological modernization. The goal is to create conditions for producing modern, competitive aircraft by leveraging its expertise in project management and analytics. Herman Greff and his team at Spurbank are not aviation engineers or managers. Their role is to coordinate work in line with principles of accountability, transparency, and efficiency, rather than replacing specialized professionals. This includes introducing stricter budgetary controls, eliminating obsolete organizational structures, and improving operational efficiency and product quality. The audit and upcoming reforms are a significant, though compelled, step toward transforming the chaotic management of Russian aviation into a more structured, results-oriented system. The ultimate success of this initiative will depend on the industry's ability to adapt to new requirements, the effectiveness of the management model, and its capacity to meet state mandates for aircraft manufacturing and modernization. This process offers optimism for the revival and future competitiveness of the Russian aviation sector. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, please take our channel membership, which is very affordable, to encourage us.